Hello and welcome to this little web development tutorial. I'm Patrick God and I am sweating today because it is freaking hot in here. 30 degrees Celsius, 86 Fahrenheit. Yeah, I looked this up. So uh, yeah, let's make this quick. It's about auto mapper and data transfer objects. And that's pretty much it. It's a little introduction into these things. And I think this is pretty useful stuff. So if you learned something and like this tutorial, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and maybe even subscribe to my channel it does make a difference thank you so much and also please check out my newsletter because in there you get all these tutorials here on my youtube channel earlier in your inbox and also access to upcoming online courses and discounts and all that stuff so if you want to get this then maybe you want to subscribe to my newsletter but apart from that just continue watching and enjoy this little introduction to automapper with dotnet 6. all right so i created this little web API project here with .NET 6 and Visual Studio 2022. And you can see already I did not change a lot. I just added a superhero class here and also a superhero controller, really nothing fancy. And what we want to do here is we see this entity with an ID, the name, first name, and so on. And also a controller with some mock data already where we get these heroes here. Now we can already start this again. It's pretty simple stuff. Let me show you here. Swagger UI, we've got our call can try this out, hit execute, and we get the complete data. Now, the thing is that maybe we don't want to show the user some parts of this data here, of this entity, like the date edit, for instance, date modified, maybe even the ID, not necessary. So let's say we only want to display the name, the first name, the last name, and the place. And this is where the DTO comes in, the data transfer object, meaning we create another class. So let's go back to Visual Studio. And then we just call this superhero DTO, for instance. So right click the project, add a new class here. And again, we call the superhero DTO, for instance. And typically you would use this for communicating with the client with the front end, right? So you've got a superhero DTO here in this example. And since this should be a really simple example, we just copy these properties here paste them and that's it already. But uh, let's say the application gets a bit more complex maybe, then you may find some classes called superhero response or superhero result or also superhero request. For instance, when you want to create a new superhero with specific data, let's say we've got a lot more data like some I don't know, some statistics, maybe some strength data, whatever it is. And in this case, the request uh, would be then used to create a new superhero and the response or the result DTO then for the result. And we will do this here as well with, again, a really short and hopefully simple example, but we will use the superhero DTO here for both the response and also the request. But let's start with the response, right? So we've got our superhero DTO here. Now the thing is to get this data here in this call, what we would have to do is we would, we would have to go through the complete uh, list here and map the properties one by one, right? So in essence, let's say uh, we would have um, a superhero DTO, something like that. Uh, which is a new superhero DTO, right? And then we would then say, I know we would we would run through the uh, we would iterate through the um, through the list here. But let's say we've got uh, a superhero here, and then we would have to say, all right. So the ID, or no, we would we just want to, of course, say, uh, tell the send the name to the client. It's already pretty late, guys, and it's it's really freaking hot in here. It is, uh, well, that's Celsius. So it's 30 degrees Celsius here in my little studio. And what's that in Fahrenheit? Let me let me have a quick look. Celsius to Fahrenheit. Uh, 86, yeah, maybe almost 90 Fahrenheit. Well, not really. 89 maybe, so that would be 32 Celsius. So it's really, really hot and it's late. So 
yeah, I'm sweating. I'm just sitting here and coding and it's not pretty hard here, the stuff you're doing. So it's not because of the code I'm sweating. It's really because of the heat today and we've got nine o'clock. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, so here we got the name and then uh, let's say we have to, yeah, that's it, right? So we had to manually do that stuff for every single DTO, for every single superhero and we don't want to do that. But what we can do is we can use AutoMapper, right? So this is where AutoMapper comes in. And with AutoMapper, this is done kinda automatically. We still have to configure some stuff, but it, as soon as you configure that, it works out of the box. And this is really great. So let's install AutoMapper next. Just right click the, or let's stop the application first. Just close the terminal here and then we uh, manage our NuGet packages and browse and look for AutoMapper. It's not this one. Well, I think you can also use this one, but the only thing we need is this here, AutoMapper extensions for ASP.NET Core. So AutoMapper extensions, Microsoft dependency injection. That's the one we need. And when this is installed, we have to configure it in the in the program CS. Let's just double check here in our project file. There it is, right? So this is AutoMapper now, version currently is 11. Swashbuckle is for Swagger UI, also a nice name. And here now in the program CS, we have to configure or register AutoMapper or edit. So that would be a builder services and then add AutoMapper, right? But this is not everything. We have to add an argument here and this is an assembly and we can simply do something like that just the assembly here and close the parenthesis. And as you can see now, the parameter is an array of assemblies in essence, but we can just use this one, the single one, and that's it. So this is the, the first thing we have to do. And now I would say we just try this out, right? So back to the controller and now we try to map our entities, so the superhero entities to the superhero DTO. But the first thing we need is we have to inject our mapper first. So let's add one, private read only. And then this is I mapper from auto mapper. I call this mapper and then we create a new constructor, generate constructor. So what I did is well, uh, I press control period and then we choose generate constructor. That's what I need. And now here regarding the heroes, first we have to return the action result. And now we iterate through all the heroes. We do that with a little link statement here, select. And then for every hero, we say mapper, please map our hero to the superhero DTO. All right, so this is already the destination and the source then is every single hero in our list of heroes, right? So the result you would expect now is just um, uh, um, a list of only or of the heroes, but only with the name, first name, last name, and the place. Just double check here. This is the superhero DTO name, first name, last name, and the place. And when we have another, okay, already rebuilt, but uh, I think you uh, you get the idea, right? We can again do something like that. Stop this and uh, run the app again. There it is already. Refresh. And here we get all our heroes with all the data, but now we just want the, yeah, we rebuilt it. Any time we change something, I was just confused by the error message here. And now let's try that again. Let's just, just make sure to restart the application. There it is, just reload here because sometimes hot reload, you know, doesn't always work. And now pay attention, we hit execute, we're getting an error. And this 
is okay because it says missing type map configuration or unsupported mapping. So it's called auto mapper, but it doesn't work automatically out of the box. We still have to configure one thing, but then I promise it will work. And what we have to do is we have to add a profile and then create a map for our mappings. All right, so many mappings. So what we need now is another class so we add one and let's just call this auto mapper profile. And this one inherits from profile, provides a named configuration for maps. Naming conventions become scope per profile. All right. And in here now we add almost, we add a constructor. And now we just write create map. And now we start with the source and then the destination. All right. So from our superhero, we want to map to the superhero DTO. Save that. Don't know why the error comes. It's the latest version of Visual Studio Code, uh, not code, Visual Studio 2022. But let's uh, just close this and run that one more time. There's still an error. Is there really another process? I'm not sure about that. Let's just, let's just rebuild the complete solution. It succeeded. And now I hope that we're getting here. So let's just try this one more time. We hit execute. And voila, this is the result. Now we only get the name, the first name, the last name and the place. Great. And of course, this also works the other way around. So now if we want to create a superhero and we want to use the superhero DTO for the request, what we can do is we can just write another method here. And since I'm a really lazy coder, let's just copy this make a post method out of that. And let's call this add just one hero. And this now gets a superhero DTO, which is our new hero. All right. And now in here, well, we could do it in one line, but just let's just do it like that. We have a new hero here and use mapper map. That's almost correct. We want to map the new hero, not into a DTO. It already is a DTO into a super or to a super hero entity. And now here we say heroes add hero because again, we cannot use our new hero here. Of course, it's another type of list. So let's just say this is now a hero and we edit and then again we just select all of them and map them back to superhero DTOs. So let's save this now. Visual Studio, Jesus Christ, what is going on here? So let's stop the app again and save everything. I thought it was already stopped. I don't know why this is happening, but still let's just run this. And let's have another. Okay, here's now our post method. And what's happening now? And yeah, let's just use this body. We're getting another error. Of course, we have to configure the mapping again. All right. So just the other way around. So here now we can again just copy this, paste it here. Oh, and now we want to map the DTO to a superhero. Stop everything. But we also have to stop the, the terminal here, run it. And now let's just refresh the page again. Drum roll, please. But let's use a great name here. Almost. This is now the Batman Bruce Wayne in Gotham City and we hit execute and it works. So the superhero was added with the help of the superhero DTO and then it is also returned as a superhero DTO. And that's everything in essence. So this is a really short tutorial for now. As always, you can get the code 
from my GitHub repository, of course. Check out the link in the video description. But that's it now for a little quick and simple introduction to Automapper. Yeah, that's it. It is late, half past nine and still really hot in here. But I hope you learned something with Automapper and data transfer objects in this little quick tutorial. If so, please click the like button and maybe even subscribe to my channel. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. And maybe again, the newsletter is something for you in particular for the upcoming .NET web development bootcamp. If you're subscribed to that newsletter, you will be the first to know when this thing is available. And that's it now. I am sweating. I already told you that. So I will get a shower now again today because it is it's just crazy. Anyways, if you want more .NET tutorials, then please check out the ones here on the side or just go to my channel here on YouTube and look for other stuff. Thank you very much for checking out these videos. And also thank you very much for watching this tutorial here. So thank you very much for your time and I hope I see you next time. Take care.